Hi, everyone. <laughs> oh, we're, I don't know if we're starting yet. This is us. Hey guys. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. So we are currently rocking my office right now. Hey. Hey. Oh, I should close the door. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So while Sarah is closing the door, we're just going to wait a few minutes for people to come join us. I know we really didn't have um, like a set time and for that we apologize. We just weren't really sure um, what the schedule was going to look like today, to be honest. Yeah. I had appointments, and Mo had stuff going, and you know, <laughs> we had stuff to go in. And we didn't know how long we'd spend yakking. It's life. <laughs> <laughs> or praying. Well, there or too. Or clearing. That too. Yeah. Or All having a terror moment. That, that wouldn't be me. Well, in all honesty, I kind of threw her under the bus. Yes. I'm just going to admit it. <laughs> she said to me, we need to do our journeys. I was like, great idea. She says, you're first. <laughs> I said, what? True story. Why me? <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> you might not know this, but like we're real people. And, and uh, my biggest fear is right here. <laughs> I'm laughing with you. I really no, am. You are, not. you are laughing at oh, me. No, not at you. I just, okay, so it's probably my own trigger too because I'm like, yeah, what would I even say? Oh. <laughs> You're next. I'm next. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this just let me put a pin in it for just a little bit longer because, but I did. The peeps were like, you guys need to share your stories. You need to share with people your journey on how you got where you are. Um, spiritually, and I'm zinging from it to do. Um, because yeah. there's a lot of healing in that, in that retelling, and a lot of learning and growth. Um, the main thing is so that people know they're not alone. Yeah. And of course, I heard, don't script it. So, I have Never. no clue what I'm saying tonight. We wing it, boo boo. We're winging it. We wing it. Okay, Yay. so you're going to look at comments in case there's comments. I will help moderate as she Which shares her story. I don't know how to get that up on here. It's That's the right. weirdest thing. I don't know because mine does. Why doesn't it do the comments on here? I don't know. Right so can someone comment can you turn them on? something turn them on right there. so that we can see if this is working on here? Yeah, it says all viewers can participate, but every time I do this on my computer, nothing shows up. And what's that little drop down box? Um, that's what I just did. Oh, I thought you hit the three little dots. Uh, that would be the drop down box. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Weird. It's not there, so you have to look at yours to see there's comments. It just it won't so show strange. the comments. So you have to look on your phone. Yeah, I will. Because be for some phone. reason, it just won't do it. So. I am not going to look at comments. So if you have questions, ask questions. Um, anybody who knows me knows that I am, there is not a part of my story that I don't share. Like, so there's nothing hidden. Oh, I saw hello, everyone. Yeah. Hi, guys. You know, I am, I truly share everything. And when um, Creator comes through, like, in a session or something, and I meant to share part of it, I do. Um, but... Yeah, this is different. Anyways, so where do we start? What well, do we want to start with? Let's do do start. This? Let's start by getting everybody connected. Um, just let's just do a little prayer and call on everybody's peeps. Release feeling like I was put under the bus. Release a little bit of the betrayal and a little bit of the <laughs> nice. prayer cancel delete. Keep I'm telling nice a story. Shit on thick. The wheels on the bus go really? round it. Come They're on. Canceled. I don't feel betrayed by them. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. <coughs> All right. So I'm not creating that. Clear <laughs> right. Okay. So I want everybody to just close your eyes. Ooh. Feet on the floor. We need to release some energy. Yeah, there's a whole lot of energy. Yeah. We're just going to ask, command, and request, creator of all that is. Insert your higher power here. 
We're just going to ask and request that wherever everybody is, that it be set a sacred space, clearing the space and all of our physical bodies, energy bodies, auric fields, all the way out to our golden labs, releasing any and all things free and without God's love and light, sending it to the light, to God's light, to be healed with love and light and replacing all of that from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet and everything in between, filling it with love, light, healing energy, and creator's unconditional love. Again, setting everyone's space, a sacred space. Just say yes to receive it. Create it now. And anybody that watches this later at any time, you can say yes and it'll happen again. It's energy, it's fluid. Um, and we'll just set that as an intention as well. If you wanna come back and hear her story again, um, please do and just know that you can say yes and it'll it'll happen again for you. So, um, <laughs> I did, I did, I did throw Sarah under the bus a little bit, but it wasn't in a negative way. It really wasn't intended that way. Um, you know, we've been doing these lives. She's like, whatever, whatever. Yes, it was. <laughs> you know what? Mine's going to be out of the way. I and know. Then, guess guess go next. <laughs> There's that, right? Okay. Anyways. Anyway, um, you know, we've been talking about, okay, well, what do we want to do next? And, um, ooh, I had this idea and, oh man, I got this inspired idea and all that, those, those things. And so, of course, we're always talking about it. And I was like, you know, you know, keep feeling like, you know, there's people that Sarah invited into the group that I don't know. And then I've invited people that. Right. So that it's actually a really know, good idea. That Sarah to doesn't do an know. Introduction. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there's some of, some people that do know Sarah, but they don't know her story. And so, um, you know, we've shared bits and pieces as we've done things, but this is a great way for everybody to, that don't know us to really get to know us and know what we've kind of been through or where we're coming from. Um, cause everybody's journey is so individual, but there's a lot of teaching and learning and growing and there's beauty in that. Right. So we just thought, okay, well, I just thought this would be a great opportunity. <laughs> and be honest, which guide was it that said, and let Sarah go first. My dad. <laughs> you, can't, you can't fight with a dad. Yeah. Right? Okay. Anyways, <laughs> I heard that too, and I was like, hey, hey, okay. So I do a lot of self work, like a lot of self work. I do not spiritually bypass anything, usually. Um, so this is one of those things that I've done a lot of work on, um, but it's a work in progress. Anyways, yeah. Okay. So where do I start? Like, okay, so. I know, it got a little toast in here. All oh, the peeps are flooding in. No. Oh, they're telling me where to start. Okay. <sighs> okay. So, my journey to be here today, I mean, we all, every single person, including you, every person has a story. Every person has a story and a backstory and a story behind that story. And, um, and those stories are all super important, and we all want to be heard for that. Um, and we need a safe place to share that. So, you know, the whole story doesn't have to come out today, but my my journey into being here, where I'm sitting right here in front of you guys, totally real, um, I think started where a lot of you guys started, you know, as a kid, as a kid. Um, and I was intuitive as a kid. I think I just had, I had a really active imagination, which helps us to connect into that intuition. Um, and I was really intuitive and I had some uh, experiences and I don't think I told anybody about these things, but I had experiences that opened me. I used to see as a kid, you know, I saw angels, um, I saw spirits and they were just my, my, my friends. I mean, they just were. Um, so I remember that and then I remember some not so good stuff that happened and it scared me so badly that I shut it all off. Um, 
you know, that that's one big story that was the beginning. And then the other part of that was around the same time, um, and I am not going in, we all have our trauma stories too, but I, I was locked in a suitcase. So I was locked in a suitcase and I was in there long enough that I remember crossing over. And was don't get me started. Me cry. And I remember being locked, I remember being zipped up, I remember the whole shebang. And um, I remember Asheville coming to me and being with me. And actually being with me when I crossed over and I sat with um, the Divine Mother and was held and loved and then told I had to go back and I actually was pretty mad I had to go back. <laughs> Even though I love my mom and I love my brother, I, you know, I love my brother and everything. So I came back and uh, moved forward quite a ways. And as a teenager, I had no belief in anything and did not tap into any of this um, until, once again, something critical happened and my brother passed away. Um, he committed suicide when I was 16. And I was in a really bad place and I wanted to commit suicide. And this is actually where a whole lot of um, stuff opened for me. And I didn't know how to navigate through that. I was lost and um, there's a whole lot of other things happened at the same time, which I'm not scared to share, but I don't want this to be like a story. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it happened. And- um, I'm gonna heal you by clearing you all out. That's right. <laughs> um, and I was really lost. And I remember a moment where I was pretty sure I was gonna commit suicide. And um, I know what that feels like. And I hadn't prayed since I was a little girl. <coughs> and I prayed. And I remember, as I thought at that time, God, um, as I still do, but divine, creator, source, whatever our words for it are, came to me and held me. And in the middle of the night, I woke up and I could see the light all around me and it was still there. I said, okay, there's something. There's something. My brother started coming to me, so my mediumship opened up. Um, he told me a lot of things about the afterlife and showed me a lot of things. Whew. And then I just stepped forward. Um, at the same time, at the very same time, I was taking care of a terminally ill little boy who I love deeply, who ended up crossing over. But it led me into being a nurse and also understanding the soul's journey we're on. I think I was always searching for those questions. Even as a young kid, I was that kid who'd have those conversations that you're like, why are as a 12 year old having these conversations? But so I stepped into being a nurse and um, I loved being a nurse, but it wasn't quite the right path for me as a healer. And, you know, went through some life experiences, um, ended up getting remarried. I've been married, remarried anyways. And we, my husband and I decided to have more kids and to stay home and I did. And so then it kind of got pause. Like some stuff would come through. My brother would talk to me occasionally, but nothing big. Like there's this big, I was just mom. I was mom um, until my late thirties. and. I remember there was a moment and I had so much healing to do within there. I had so much healing to do and I've been to counseling multiple times and I'm sitting there in my late thirties and I remember saying, I know I'm supposed to do something. What is that something? I don't know what that something is. Um, you know, and I was struggling feeling all the things we can feel when we're triggered, when we're feeling like we're not good enough and I'm unloved and there was just so much and so much trauma from my childhood and so much trauma from young adulthood and my prior marriage and because I never allowed myself to feel. So I held on to it all, right? And so um, I had a lot of healing to do because I couldn't find that space in me to love me. And I stepped in. I literally, someone read my hands and um, one of the only certified hand analysts in the state at the time and she read my hands and I didn't know her very well and I was like whoa and then she did it again at another time she says you're a healer and I said I am I really am oh my god I'm a healer <laughs> can you imagine me I'm a healer I'm like yes yes I am um you know because in that interim time part of the reason I quit being a nurse was because and I had moved into management doing other stuff but that was my early 20s I quit because part of that story is I got lupus I got super sick. Like I was so sick, I could barely walk. My feet were puppy pads. My joints were, I mean, I was like 
shuffle. I mean, I understand that kind of pain. My lungs were impacted. I kept on getting pneumonia. So this was a long journey of healing from that too. You know, and so I stepped into the hand analysis. I really, really, I knew I had to follow something. I had to. And I stepped in. I had been a stay-at-home mom who believed I wasn't worthy and I was unlovable. But I put my foot down and I said, yes, I'm doing this. And it wasn't easy because it wasn't a $100 program. Mm -mm. It, it, it was a lot of money. It was spending. Yeah, and it's it two years spend. worth. So, and I ended up doing two years worth. Yeah. Um, and midway through there, somewhere along the line, we took theta classes. Yeah, um, yeah, because the, I met Sarah because my sister took hands class with her. That's yes. how this yep. is all connected. Um, and yeah, you guys were about. Well, you guys had done a fair in Missoula, and you guys had gotten a booth together yep. to do hands, um, to kind of dip your toe in, and you're like, let's just do it. And we met somebody mm -hmm. that did Theta, um, mm -hmm. and I didn't know what that was, and I literally, um, I was like, wow. And then her sister, Diana, yeah. said, we have to do that. And I said, yes, we do. We have to do that. Right. I didn't know what it was, and I drove up to Big Fork and took, I think we signed up for two classes that Yeah, person. we were up there for a week, because I remember Diana came back from the fair I said how was it how how was it and she's like oh my gosh it was amazing and then she's like hey you know you've been and this is part of my story too about hey you've been looking for something come do it I this. found it me and Sarah are doing it we're doing it you have to do it with us I'm like I have to she was like no but you really have to but that's <laughs> part of the story because yeah. that weekend that oh, week we were there amazing so my intuition started really opening while I was doing hands because whenever you guys start digging in and healing our intuition is directly tapped to that mm -hmm. not that we can't be tapped in and accessing stuff when we have a lot of healing to do but there is a correlation to the more clear you get the more clear you see feel experience there is a correlation there and so but when we went to that boom like wow. boom oh yeah oh right? yeah oh yeah boom it was amazing um However, did you, was that, so this is a good timeline, trying to remember this. Um, did you come to our class weekend before we did Theta? Where well, I it totally was, opened, it was after, wasn't it? It was, yeah, it Way was after. after. Yeah. Okay. When I did the intensive. No, when do you remember when you came and we were channeling all that yeah, stuff? Yeah, that was That's way when after. Mama came out. Yeah, that, that was, was way, way after. after. Okay, that I, was, I couldn't remember. That okay. was a trip. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to Theta, and then I'm like, and this is how it was for everything. I step in for my own healing, and then I'm like, well, I have to do it for everybody else. This is my path. Like I, I, I just know it. Stepped into Theta, knew it, dive face first, <laughs> you know, head first, and then I, I took um, a Reiki class. I was like, but I did it, you know, my way because we learned something different first, you know, and it just, it just kept on escalating one after another like that. And then my intuition as I'm doing this, it opened, like it opened in a really big way. Um, and I would say, if you want your intuition to open, ask for peace and ease. Oh, absolutely. Ask for peace and ease. Oh, <laughs> with ease and grace, man. That, those are, that's. Always. Ooh, yeah. Especially, especially if you got the feels. And you'll, you're seeing me jerk and twitch. It's just the energy. I'm not epileptic. But There's a I lot swear. of energy. Can you see all this Our red? face gets all red, but our skin's actually cool to the touch. It's just... So the reason why it was important for me to like mention the lupus and stuff is all of that and feeling so unloved and unworthy is that's part of my journey into this. I had... I knew intrinsically, I had a belief, and I still do, of heal or heal thyself. Though I do allow support and help, and I believe in being with a community that can support us in that. I don't believe I have to do it myself. But there was a place in me that knew, I am not here to be in pain my whole life. I have always tried to be very joyful. My middle name is Joy. My mom said I used to wake up smiling no matter what circumstances were. She said, I was I a joy. That. I was sunshine. I believe that. You know, my middle name's Joy. My number is three, which is about joy. joy. Um, I, I, my name, when you put the numerology together, is joy. It's three. I mean, everything points to this is the pathway. I knew we are not here. This is illusion. I knew we were not supposed to. Like, this happens, and we need to acknowledge it, and we can't spiritually bypass it, but we don't have to stay there. 
right? We don't have to. Like, I, it's something intrinsic in me knew that. So that all led to this. That all led me here. And then the more I dig in and the more I clear, the more I don't have to. <laughs> and the more all of this opens into intuition. Um, yeah, there's been some really interesting stories as we did that, as we peeled that oh, back. Man. So when I started channeling, I did not know what that stuff was. I'm sitting here going, how was that? I don't even remember. So mama came in at one point. So oh, this no. is before I knew oh, how to channel well, before oh, no. I knew how to set boundaries. Oh, no, let me, let me, <laughs> let me. So I get this phone call. So there, her and my sister and a couple other gals in their hand class ended up going to Theta with us. We didn't even know they were going. We kind of found out right mm -hmm. before. And so you guys would get together, what, once a month or every other month for hands for a weekend or whatever for class. And <laughs> so they're all out at somebody's house for the weekend doing their hands thing. And I wasn't led to do that. I never felt like it was my thing. I was like, no, y'all have fun with that. But I get this phone call and it's like, it's my sister. Mo, you have to come for dinner. And I'm like... Uh, are you guys doing your, your, your class weekend or whatever? Oh, I'm remembering. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, you have to come for dinner. And I was like, awkward. But she's like, no, ever, no, you have to. I'm like, is it going to be all right? And she goes, yes. Come, come at this time. Yeah, Here's the address. Up. Yep. Come at this time, at this address and just show up. I'm like, okay. She goes, bring your stuff. And I'm like, okay. And so I did, you know, I, I didn't know. I thought, okay, I guess I'm going to do a card reading. I don't, I don't know. I was really, really new at that. So I was not feeling that at all, but I was like, <laughs> okay. Um, so I come with my stuff and yeah, that all went sideways really quick on me because I had no clue, but I can hear everybody laughing in the background and I'm like, I almost feel like I'm being set up. So I show up and so they're wrapping up their class and then they're I was like, thrown under the bus again. Hey, no, no, I but it wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me this time. So, <laughs> so um, my sister like literally grabs me and goes, "Come!" And she's like dragging me. My sister's five foot two, y'all. I am not. <laughs> and she's like dragging me down the hallway, and like pretty much like shoving me into this room and I'm like what is going on and all of us that had been at Theta so there was five of us are standing in here and they'll like sit they put me in the hot seat and I'm like what is happening right now and then Sarah steps forward and she looks at me and she starts channeling I knew what channeling was but I'd never seen her do it. And she's like speaking in a whole nother language and her fingers all up in my face. And I was like, I was trying way not to do it actually. Okay. Right. And I was trying not to laugh at her because I was like, I, not gonna lie, no filter, trigger warning. My first thought was like, what the fuck did they do to you? <laughs> What is happening right now? I'm not going to lie. And I'm sorry about that. But that was the first thing. And I looked at my sister and she's I was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, what is happening? But that, so was, that was like. That was the day my, my channeling came in and mama came through. And actually she had to Large and in charge. But I needed to bust through into power, I think. So it was an experience for me. And sometimes we experience things in the way we don't know because we'd never done it before and it was a strong energy so i do kind of miss her though she was sassy little russian lady i love her yeah she was she was something else so um <laughs> I, 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 I love you too right so anyways that came in and then things <laughs> things just started exponentially happening i do think the hand analysis opened me opened me up because when you step into something i mean intrinsically i was doing a lot of readings i was doing a lot of fairs you have to rely on your intuition, even though the system is very, for you guys who don't know, hand analysis um, is very much based upon study and what can be shown in the hands through that. But you are, when I, it's just how I worked. And I didn't know I was doing it until someone who was a theta healer said to me, you do know you're totally connected into source when you're doing this, right? And I said, oh, I am? They go, do you feel the angels around you? I was like, is that why I'm getting so hot? <laughs> no clue. Okay, so we've all been at our different stages. It's not like I came into the world and I said, yeah, I got this. 
Like, there's totally been learning that's happened through it. After that happened, I had a separate, you know, um... Oh, sorry. <laughs> of that. Oh, oh. April, oh, she misses Mama, too, just thinking of that fiery fam. No kidding. I still bring through the energy, but I don't have to bring through it like that anymore. Yeah. She's just a fierce... She's an ancestor... Is she an ancestor, or is she a... Um, ancestor. Yeah, she is an ancestor. So, um... Yeah, if, anyway, so we don't always know in the beginning, like, how to, we're learning, like, we're learning all of that, right? And so I definitely went through my own learning. Thankfully, because of some of the modalities we did, it really helped. Because when you, when you know to clear any beliefs that could be creating it in an uncomfortable way, when you know how to clear those energies, a lot of ancestral things, um, it, it, it does bring more peace and ease if you are everybody's intuitive but if it's coming through all at once and i feel as if mine has been like a freight train coming through because oh, if you think about it how old am i now <laughs> i think i'm she looks at me i was born in 76 so you're 45 in That's... august i'll be 46 okay yeah i'm 40 almost 46 um <laughs> um okay um I'm really smart, I swear. Um, she is. <laughs> okay, so I'm 45, and I started this journey around age... <coughs> I think Cam started around when I was 37 or 38. I mean, it hasn't been that long, because it took me about a year to decide to step in. It took a long time. It's been... Well, let's see. Let's, let's be honest. We've been doing Theta for... May will be four years. Yeah, and I was doing that a couple years prior. Yeah, well, but, but you, still, yeah. to go from that, although, I mean, I was intuitive. I mean, we're all intuitive, and I was aware of it. I just didn't do much with it or understand it, right? And then, I mean, it's been an accelerated course, but as this is pro progress, what happened is, so every step of the way I've heard, go this direction. And if I'm, I have, I'm really good at listening to that voice that says go, sometimes listening to it even when it means go but maybe in a couple of months so like i do it all now like now i have felt this pressure inside me and i don't anymore like now i actually feel like huh okay there's still growth there's still that but i don't have to go at, at 500 miles per hour because i was literally told take this class take this class take this class so much so i took over 40 certifications in the last few years that's a lot of learning when you think about it oh yeah like a lot oh yeah I heard um, a few winters ago when I heard to take my teacher's training, I literally was standing in the kitchen. This was my first clear, clear auditory um, where I heard creators say, and the next step on your divine path is to step into the master training. I said, what? I mean, I have been a stay-at-home mom, and I had started building my business right away once I started the hands. Yep. But I was like, uh, mm, and, and just to relay, my husband's in law enforcement. So it's, I was like, hmm. I mean, I had many a year where I was literally grinding the grain with the wheat milk. I'm not kidding. Like, growing a garden, canning food. Yep. Um, all our clothes, most of our clothes are, not all of them, certain things you don't, but we're coming from goodwill. I mean we were very much set in a certain mindset. So it was like, what, what, what? I mean, that's two months I spent in Big Fork and I had been a stay-at-home mom that had never been away from my kids. So it was big and I heard that. That was my first clear auditory and I was like, okay, I guess I'm doing that. <laughs> my husband is a trooper, <laughs> not literally. <laughs> <laughs> right. But he's a trooper. And I remember that because you're like, Am I hearing that right? And I'm like, oh, don't ask me. And she's like, Mo. And I'm like, oh, she's asking me. <laughs> but I did. And I she heard did. It. And I was like, I am hearing that for you too. And I was like, well, you guys have big RV, don't you? But and then, but it's big fork in the summer, so that gets tricky too. Like, where are you going to put it? And there was a lot of things. But you know, I, I guess for me, it always just proved. Um, and I see it time and time again, and I'm sure all of you can relate to that. If it's truly in your divine timing, it's going to happen. It's going to happen because they're going to line it up um, so that it just flows. And it did beautifully. And you guys had so much fun that summer. Well, they were actually, I was there with a friend, another friend who did it. And my, my, I actually, my, 
husband and I would see him on the weekends, some weekends, but it wasn't every weekend. Right. Because I went straight. I was in um, practitioner classes during the evening, and I was in teacher's training during the, day. during the day, straight through. Like, it was straight. There was very few days off. So yeah. it was fun for me. Mm -hmm. It was hard to be away from the family. I don't know that I'll ever choose that again. But that was my journey, like, every step of the way. Yeah, but that was, like, the fast track. It was like they were... I, they and were fast tracking me. And yeah. I think it's because of this moment in history right here. Mm -hmm. What's happening now. Absolutely. I mean, I had a lot of fears. I had a lot. But 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 I'm really good at putting my foot in and being stubborn. And when I know it's right, like getting me to move can be like I may be five feet tall. She's the chihuahua. <laughs> uh, I don't look like a chihuahua. No, can you like please chihuahua. say Yorkie? Well, they're, ooh, a Morky is really cute. The, a Shorky. The Morky. I'm a Shorky. The Morkies are cute, though. What is a Morky? That's like a morph. Mor Morky. They're the, um, Maltese Yorkies. Oh, they're cute. Anyway, she's, yeah, she can really. Okay. She's so so that's my down. pathway. And that's how I got to here. And, and because of that, <laughs> and it's been a lot of intense work. And part of the journey, too, was. I needed to heal this place that could not feel love for myself, love and everybody else. And I knew that was like the place I had to go. And I was like, and it wasn't just about me stepping into my purpose. This was me feeling good in my marriage. This was me feeling good in my life. This is me healing that little girl who never felt good enough and healing some abuses that came out and, um, this was big and it was me healing those parts of me from other um from my ancestry that it had wounding um it's that that you know and and there was so much of that i just knew like i knew i was i i knew there was a different way uh, and you know and that is the path to awakening that's what it is we can i knew we didn't have to suffer like i just i heard it i felt it and i knew it and I knew that there were so many light beings around us. And even though I had forgotten for a period of time, and I knew our ancestors loved us because that message had been loud and clear. And I have a great imagination. And I just, like, life is great. Like, life is for really, really living. So I knew that. And when we awaken to who we really are, so we are these people that have had these experiences. This is us. This is us too. This is the experience we're having and it is valid and we can't bypass it. And there's a space for healing within it, but yet, yeah, but that's not who we really are. Like we are infinite. We are, that is just the experience we're having so that we can discover who we really are. And I believe, especially at this time in history, this is the time where we're meant to wake up to that. Like it's, a, it's like waking up. It's like you came out of a, a dream and you're like, why have I been doing that? I don't have to. Like, all these have tos, the obligations, the, and a lot of it's karma. A lot of it's the karmic ties, the obligations, the hooks, cords, attachments. It's the beliefs from our ancestors. It's it's all of this. We're here to be expansive. The oath, spouse, promises. Yes. I mean, even, even ugh, the simplest things, like, and that's part of my story, but we make promises about stuff that we forget about. Right. And we're here to learn. We're here to learn. So the faster that we learn our lessons. And as I did that, everything just got peeled back. And then the intuition. See, here's the thing. Every single person here is highly intuitive and can tap into all of it in your own individual way. Because we all have our different way. Mo and I do not see things the same. I do claim that, yes, I am a medium, but I see it differently. And that's okay. Right? That's your gift. I mean... Exactly. We do it mm -hmm. differently, but mm -hmm. it's still there. And yep. the more we clear, the more we um, step into that infinite space of who we really are, the more we perceive. So it's kind of like hand in hand it goes. I mean, in, in theta healing, when we're looking at that and we're looking at like um, an intuitive anatomy and we're looking at different body systems, literally belief systems are, are with the different... Um, you know, with each body system, with each mm -hmm. organ system, with each everything... And as you release that, you release the um, discoherent energy that's attached to it. Well, those systems are tied to our chakras, which are tied to our intuitive 
abilities. So the more you release, the more that opens. Not that we don't sometimes have inherent ones that are coming through and sometimes with a whole lot of fear attached to it or other things. Mm -hmm. So the clearer you get, the clearer that can open if you want it to and you choose for that. Um, and sometimes if you don't, well, at least in this, somewhere you're choosing it. But um, yeah. So, I mean, I guess that's my story in a long, short nutshell. So. Did I miss something? Mm, no. Okay. <laughs> Lisa, I love I love learning to learn with I Lisa love you, Lisa. I do so too. much. <laughs> Melissa says you are love and light, Sarah. Aww. Um, and Gosh. that is true. And that is true. So, <clears throat> okay. So the peeps okay. are asking, what's your most memorable moment? from when you were younger in a positive. We'll, we'll keep it to the positive. What's the one thing that really stood out to you that you never let go of when you were little in relation to your intuitive gifts and abilities? Oh, my intuitive gifts? Yeah. Okay, that makes it a little bit easier. Sorry. Okay, so I was the kid. Is this the most memorable? So I already told you about the angels. I mean, it's pretty memorable seeing the angels. But it's funny. When you said that, the first thing that flashed in, mm -hmm. I was that kid you might not have wanted over because I was looking for the spirits in the closet. <laughs> I was the kid that was pulling the other kids in. Okay, we're going on a ghost hunt. We're going on a ghost hunt to find a trick-or-treat ghost. And I know. Now, I grew up in New Hampshire. So those houses are old. And they're there. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> and I could see it when I was little. And now that I look back at it, I'm like, how did nobody guess that I was like, because I would talk about portals. Like, I saw portals in the closets. I mean, yeah. I can, I still can see them. <clears throat> and when I was little, I saw with my eyes instead of my imagination. Now it's, I have boundaries with that because I choose to <laughs> see as guided and as needed and as I choose <laughs> so yeah does that yeah that was me I was that child and then then the parents were saying Sarah Sarah <coughs> so you're scaring the other children <laughs> oh my god that was me you know but it was a different time back then because I'm only three years am I only three years older than you I don't know I thought I was five years older than you I'm 45 as well, we clarified if you were born in 76 then yeah so I was born in 73 god I'm dating myself I'm 48 years old so you're only three years older than me I thought I was five my husband's five she got it wrong okay anyway anyway um, it was a different. I I can't. That's still. Me. It was a different time back then, right? Uh, not everybody was as open as they are right now. This is, this is like. Well, but we were allowed to. Like I played a lot. Like we were sent out to play. Yeah, a lot we were encouraged to use our imagination and our creativity. Um, you know. But I us, know when it was cr like my imagination. Oh yeah. Like I can see it. But there were definite moments where I was like. There is something in there, and we're going to find it. I mean, I remember spending the night at my cousin's house. Oh, Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew. <laughs> but there's spirits. Like, I, I didn't know. know what to do with it. And so I'm laying in bed at that night, and, and all of a sudden I hear, and there's nobody around. Everybody's sleeping, and there's no there's no animals or anything that I can remember. There might have been, but I don't know. And I hear, da dun da da And it was one of those pop-up things. The jack in the box. Boom! The and I'm laying there going, No. <laughs> Okay, God, I don't want to know this anymore. I don't need to know that there's a spirit. I'm good. I'm good. But it was it's funny though. Right. Now I got no, I was having fun then even. I'm like, this is great. I was a ghost hunter as a kid. I forgot. That is awesome. That is awesome. But now I don't like to go on those because I'm like, no, we're sending everything to the light. To the light, to the light, to the light. Like I can't leave them there. Right. So no, I get Unless they too. choose to be there, which is a different thing. So that is a different thing. So, <laughs> so when you were reawakening, mm -hmm. right? Because you shut it down as a kid. So when you were reawakening, and if y'all have questions, uh, put them in here, and um, and we'll uh, she'll answer. Um, 
when you were reawakening, what was the what's the one thing that stands out the most to you? Like, what is the one thing you're like? Like I reawakening will never... as a teenager or reawakening because when... it, it like happens and it was like it awakened and then it it was still there, but it's not like it was a huge part of my life. Like I talked to my brother, I would smell his cologne, he'd come to dreams, he'd tell me stuff, but it wasn't like it was huge. Okay, so. So like, which but that's as a teenager, right? Well, in my 20s. That was until I was like 38. Right. So when you got cracked open again. Oh, cracked open wide. Well, that's, you feel like an egg. I'm just going to say. <laughs> there are times you feel like. Exactly. So when you got busted open again, like mm -hmm. wide open, what's the one thing that you will never forget? What's the one thing that really stands out to you? That you're like, oh, I missed that. Or... Whoa, I forgot about that. that. That's it. That's the question. I'm not sure I know what you're asking, but... I don't either. I'm just repeating what I'm told. And I cracked <sighs> open. What's the one thing that stands out to you? Like, the one thing... Oh, it's flipping amazing how we have access to so much information. We can get so much pure truth. Um, like it was amazing when it opened and you realize that so you can see it two ways it could be scary your beliefs are going to dictate this it could be a lot of things but I remember thinking this is so cool right so Jenna asks do you guys think that all the different names we give this energy like Jesus and other names uh, for a dirty I don't know what that means that oh for a deity that we worship respectively is the same entity but with different names that we call them or are they all different entities so it depends on what you're talking about right. so there are different masters mm -hmm. there are different energies there absolutely mm -hmm. um, I will say Jesus is a much different energy than Buddha yes um, Kuan Yin is a much different energy than than um, Buddha <laughs> but she's also much different if we're putting in like a class of you know she's a much different um, energy than green Tara um, they're different energies so they are their own um, so no I don't think that they are all the same it, when I say creator that is the creator of all that is that is the space of pure connection to unconditional love it's actually beyond the boundaries of our experience so they're beyond all the veils and that's where I always go to to come in and get information from anything because that actually stops Same. that actually protects it guides it shows truth and you know it brings in purity it does now, it now some people say that's God mm -hmm. everybody so that could be everybody's version that could be but it's not necessarily because we all have different beliefs about what that right. is. It, it's it's divine, as Dana says. It's divine, which is true. Um, yeah, for me, it is the most purest form of truth that you can the, get. The seventh plane, the unconditional love, creator, absolutely, energy, yeah. absolutely, creator, creator. Which sometimes yeah. I say God, sometimes I say divine source. Yeah, for me, God and creator are pretty interchangeable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you believe in the Bible and you read the Bible. Um, God created everything, so that's the space of all that Some is. Some people call higher power. I have no mm -hmm. problem using any Me of either. them. Me either. Me either. And I have I have clients that use source energy or life force energy or spirit. Or quantum. Right. I have some that use quantum, which is that's which it one. is quantum. That's no, it is. It is it quantum. Is. But I will say the super conscious, which connects to the quantum and the information that exists there and all our experiences, is not the same thing as creator energy. True. That is beyond all of that. Um, now. Was she asking, like, so do I think, like, Buddha and Jesus are the same? Absolutely not. No, they're not. No. And and I do believe deeply in Jesus. Sarah, please share about your DNA training. What led you to that? So that's the Theta Healing. That's mm -hmm. the Theta Healing Basic um, Advanced. I took Basic Advanced, Dig Deeper. We took um, them to an event intuitive anatomy mm -hmm. we've taken those yep yep so i went to um i took a lot of trainings for 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 practitioner trainings the basic advanced dig deeper manifesting in abundance um so i'm practitioners the plants the animals intuitive anatomy diseases and disorders real you world and, relations you and creator seven planes what else have you and your there's a lot of practitioner there's words basically and then when I went for two months for teachers training so part of the reason I took a lot of additional ones too 
one for growth and the other is for so I could be a master theta healer instructor that was part of it you had to have like DNA 3 you had to have these classes so it's all within theta healing um, she calls the DNA basic class the DNA part of it is because um, in that class you actually learn how to ask for healings for um, DNA and you also learn how to activate your shadow star the the chromosomes I mean a good way to say it so it, I mean without going into a lesser lesson about your chromosomes and how they all work and you know the junk DNA which there is no junk DNA but right. um and all of that so that is part of what's in there but it's working whenever you change a belief you're actually changing something on a DNA level so that is the the big reason for that did I did I explain that right yes <laughs> April Reiki master training that yeah. was interesting. Yeah, we did that too. That was an interesting. Um, that, intuitive. April was there. That was quite the quite the event. Yeah. And we'll just God, we did not see that coming. <laughs> the way that one went down. Oh yeah. And what <laughs> led me to the DNA training because I felt called and because for me when I realized that I mean the intuitive part. So in basic DNA, you learn in theta healing basic DNA. You learn how to change beliefs, how to ask for healings, how to witness these things. Everything goes through divine. I don't heal anyone, I witness. Um, you know, how to see angels, how to manifest, um, the basic manifesting. You learn how to do all these things. The most important for me is that changing of belief. Belief creates your reality. And you do change your DNA when you do that. Mm -hmm. Literally, you're changing your perception. And for me, that was hands is all about changing your response, changing your actions, clearing your karma so you can step into the life you want instead of the life you don't want. So when that happened, I was like every single class, more digging, learn another skill level like step in deeper. I mean, I did world relations because I wanted to clear the racism that I might have. Not that I ever thought of myself as racist, but we carry that stuff from our ancestors, even if we don't. I mean, the French in me was disliking the Native American in me. And I'm like, how does that help anything? And I am not in the least bit, like I'm the most least racist person yeah. I know, but that's sitting there mm -hmm. and it's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. But I did that because I knew I needed to heal that in my story so that I could support others. So every step of the way was that. So. Melissa says, so good, thank you. Jenna says, thank you. Lisa says, how do you know it's true? Do you have some type of practice to check? Hopefully this makes sense. I'm asking so as to help others connect to truth. So Lisa, Lisa are you? how do I know it's true? Like what's true? How do I know anything's true? Well, I think, I think, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Lisa, but it feels like you're asking, how do we know, um, creator is the highest truth? Like, how do you, how do you know that? How do you, how can you check that? So here's an interesting thing. Am I right, Lisa? If not, let me know. But that's right. what it feels like. So here, here's the construct of our reality and it's hooked up to chakras and this isn't necessarily a modality explanation. Okay. So I want to make sure I'm not speaking for a modality. Um, like we have all our chakra points and we have all our intuitive abilities and we have all these belief systems and we have all these dimensional realities you guys have heard of or planes of existence. Okay. As we expand through our chakras, which is in our body and as we span outward and inward, we're going through vibrations. Okay. And each vibration, each plane, dimension, reality has different belief systems within it and different constructs, oaths, vows, obligations, different, different constructs of understanding. And as you go through that, so like you have the, you know, you cross through a window when you cross over, you go into the ancestors, you know, there's, there's that, you know, you go through many dimensions there. And then there's the, the fifth plane with the angels. You're going through this, which also corresponds with chakras, by the way, and goes to the mitochondria in your cells. As you're going through this, after that comes the laws. Well, think about it. The laws of the universe dictate everything. We have the law of gravity, the law of magnetism, DNA. I mean, think about it. Laws. I mean, how we function, how we, it's laws, it's perception, it's reality, right? Beyond that, when you go beyond that, you go into what we call seventh plane or creator space or divine. Am I like totally? No, I'm laughing at Dana. I'm sorry. No, you're good. You're good. 
April says affirmation. Lisa said yes, I had it right. Affirmation, discernment of creator, highest truth is what April said. Yep. And then Dana said, Mo, I love watching you get hits because I'm over here twitching like a ding dong. I can't help it. Anyway, so you go into creator space. I love that. You go into that <laughs> space, which is beyond all of that. And when you get to that space, it's just pure love and truth. Okay. You know you're in that space because you're beyond what you would ever perceive as possible. You're beyond the limitations you've already set. You're beyond your own fear. So if you're in fear, you're not there. Right. You know, if, if you're in limitation, you're not there. And it's almost kind of like you're going there so that you can come back to the uh, other um, spaces to navigate this experience that we're having and to see truth and to be in truth. Now, you're only going to see as true as what you are able to see. There is a place for us as healers to clear ourselves, right? But intention does matter a lot too. If Absolutely. It's pure love. Absolutely. Um, so basically, when you do that, when you go to this space, the reason you do that is because you hook into a theta brainwave in part, mm -hmm. which by the way, taps you into God consciousness, which is also our seventh chakra. Um, seven chakra, pure discernment or coming through, the, the wisdom coming through and then the discernment of our, you know, our third eye. But, but the crown is the connection to the divine, the pure truth. And you're connecting into that, you're going beyond all of the boundaries. And you're getting a theta brainwave, which connects you into it, which they know, by the way, um, because they've tested it. So it's a really interesting thing. Um, part of it is you feel when you're in pure truth. Oh, yeah. You can feel the difference. Oh, yeah. It For me, anybody that's like uber empathic... Um, Sorry, is the old person? Ooh. Um, just that there's, I, I don't even know how really to explain it. Um, there is an overabundantly, amazingly soft and warm, total and complete peace that will fill and wash over you and through you when you're in that space. You will, because it's a vibration that's beyond something that you necessarily know. It is absolutely the peace that surpasses everything. Like, there is no comparison to that at all. And I, for me, when I when I get up into that space, I, I literally see that energy wash over me, and I feel it go through me, and it just fills every every cell of my being. I don't know how else to explain So quantum it. is the highest vibration also. So that's part of why it's doing that. And it is just pure love. So you can intend. Now, healers don't have to know a specific modality to be in that space. Yeah. I mean, that's important. I mean, I think modalities can teach us how to get there with purity and truth. Um, but, you know, intend that you go through unconditional love. Um, how is the message being reflected back? Is it that? Is it truth? Is it trying to sugarcoat things? Is it because that wouldn't be truth is truth, right? And um, creator truth pretty. is true. True creator truth is a hundred percent unconditional love. It's without that. It, it's but it's truth. So it's a different vibration. There's a there's a learning to it. Yes. And and whether you're in your space from you know. So there's just and there's 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 tricks to get in that and I only know the way I've been to it and how to do it my way. So um, true. And everybody's different, but that's the beauty of it. <clears throat> um, you know, like Sarah said, we learn different modalities that we may be drawn to, but um, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's what we've learned. Um, it's what feels right. I mean, I've. I, I tell my clients all the time, you know, I can take them through a, any number of meditations to get them into that space um, or a space where they're really deeply comfortable so they can work on them, do Reiki or whatever it might be. Um, and I tell them, you can do this yourself. Like, you can you can do this meditation. And, and I know I'm not alone when I say this. Um, I've gone on, like, YouTube or any other whatever to, like listening to like different types of meditations and there's just some I do not resonate with and I'm like yeah nope next um I it's just not for me but that doesn't mean it won't be for you or it won't be for somebody mm -hmm. else there is no right or wrong it's just how does that make you feel how does it make you feel 
especially my empaths, how does that make you feel? If it makes you feel a little anxious or, or whatever, no, it's not for you and that's okay. Right. Doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means it's wrong for you. <laughs> and there's and there's lots of ways to tap into that. So there was a um, class I took totally separate from any of the DNA the theta ones and she taught to go into neutral. Um, she taught to go into center neutral. So our chakras are where our intuitive centers come through. Um, they have been practicing this for a long time, opening the kundalini energy. This is not um, that good. modality necessarily. Yeah. When you do that, you're opening that stream of information. You're opening up the channel to divine. And this, this teacher taught about getting into the neutral space. What does that mean? Getting beyond your fears. Getting beyond what you believe is possible. That's part of that creator space as you realize creators doing all of it there's a law of the universe that just says we have to watch it and when you're in that space you know that maybe i don't know how to do that but creator does Absolutely. and so when you get into neutral and so she describes it almost as like getting into the center white light of neutrality am i in fear oh okay i need to pull like and that's where we clear that fear that's where we clear whatever that is and and that's not a judgment we all have it um it's just when we're in a healing space to hear that truth, that's where we go to that neutral. Neutral is a very powerful space in anything because you can see from a greater perspective instead of being in it. Well, and I think mm -hmm. it's a space of allowing too because you're oh absolutely because you're in it, but you're a little out of it in some regards, so that you're allowing everything to flow through. <laughs> and then. What? Not in energetic math. April, type that again. Don't, don't leave mad. Just leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these angels! Oh my I know, gosh! They're so, so, Ooh. okay. So let's. What's another? Oh, okay, another question. So, mm. go for it. Now, here's the thing. We all. Here's the thing. This is not something that's really that you have to learn a modality to. Right. I mean, I do love modalities, so I'm not going to lie there. I, I love them. But they have their purpose. I mean, it gave us a sense of direction. Well, and it totally opened me and taught me how to do it in a way to help me clear beliefs. But, but at the center, that neutral place is who you really are. You are a divine being. Yeah. What is it? April said not an energetic match. Don't leave mad, just go. Or just leave. <laughs> okay. When we're like, I couldn't read it yet. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so that is who you are. Yes. So we all have access to that. You don't have to be in healing work to have access. That is your... We, we have been praying, meditating, connecting since the dawn of time. I'm sure since we have been here. Mm -hmm. There's been some form of that. It is our birthright. Absolutely. You can connect to divine creator, source, God, whatever that is. And you get choice in what you believe that is. And based upon those beliefs, it's gonna change the messages that you receive. But when you, but if you believe that it is pure, unconditional love, and it is capable of all things, then powerful things can happen. And then you are also part of that. That sits at the center of you. Yeah. That is who you are. So you can connect to that because it's yours. It's yours. Sometimes we just have to peel back those layers of the onion to see it shining through. Right. Yeah. Well, that kind of just answered the question I was going to ask. <laughs> I knew it. Look at you all, intuitive and such. <laughs> it was. It was. Well, now that I'm not talking about me, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> but we are, though. <laughs> we are, though. But, yeah. um, you know, with that, it's, uh, you know, everybody. Not everybody, we're canceled it, but a lot of people feel that we're separate from divine, which we've talked about before, but we're not. We're part of, right? We're That's part right. of it as much as it's a part of us. Um, it's that whole uh, not God without, but God within um, thing. But um, what would be your advice to somebody that's just awakening and or seeking answers um, and not sure what they're doing. They're not sure what direction to go, 
What would be your advice? What sure. what's the what's the one thing that you wish somebody would have said to you when you were reawakening? Oh my gosh. So I have to go back to when I was younger, actually, because when it was... Ha well, no, because there were moments that was confusing, but here's here's what I would tell you. Connect. Connect with others that are going through this. So it just hit me, and I'm going to cry. That's the point of this group. When we were starting, we've talked about this so much, we had each other. There were moments where I, I was... <coughs> so I'm telling you, I was like... And I created this. My highest self said, oh, it's coming. And so I had lots of moments of where I would get triggered. I was literally seeing other lifetimes, whether that was ancestors, if you believe, you know, or, or other lifetimes. But I was seeing them, and I was in trauma response about them. If I hadn't had support or someone to call. So my friends that I had, um, and I'm not one of those people that has ever had like huge because I, I moved 18 times as a kid so I mean my core um, though I feel like this has expanded really big with all the people that are coming in here and that I've connected to in the Butte and Helena areas mm -hmm. and outside of it and um, I've really connected to some amazing people so this has really expanded but at that time I had a core group that I felt like I could talk to and man that made all the difference that we're going through it too, but who also has some knowledge and the ability to help me at the same time. So there's also a place for if you're with finding people that do have some of those answers and then the answers that resonate with you. <laughs> so, there right? Because if I went to my husband and I, lo I love my husband, <laughs> do you have Jesus? <laughs> Y'all need some Jesus would have been the response. <laughs> so we gotta be standing right there, but come on, man, mm -hmm. help me. Right. <laughs> yeah, totally. Right. <laughs> totally. I'm kidding about that. <laughs> I did not mean that was disrespectful. But. Oh no, not at all. <laughs> Aww. Um, April said you're communicating this so clearly and beautifully. Darla says has been such a blessing finding you guys for guidance. Aww. Aww. It's been and that's fun. And that's part of why we created this, because it can be, especially, there is a stigma attached to this, like there, especially in our culture, where we don't talk about it, and that actually makes, I mean, when I was a kid, I didn't tell anybody about this stuff, except in play. Well, it's, it's been taboo in know. many, many ways, and, and honestly, rightfully so sometimes. There's a lot of charlatans, amongst other things. Within. Discernment is one of the most important things that you can learn when you're Absolutely. intuition. Absolutely. Take yourself with a grain of salt as it's opening. Like, like know that sometimes our extreme reactions are because of our fears and things that are going on from that aren't necessarily truth. Um, it could be past life related too. I mean, yeah, many of us have been healers in many, many lifetimes. If you, if you believe in past lives and. If you don't, I'm not here to change your belief. Um, it, you know, if 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 you do believe in that, I mean, how many times have we been healers in past lives where we've been like, or even just burned connected at the into the collective conscious? Absolutely, that so it too. Doesn't matter if we believe in past lives because mm -hmm. multidimensionally, we're connected to belief systems that attach to all of it. Well, on past lives, really aren't in past are still going anyway. So yeah, there is no past life. It's yeah. Anyways, right. but we can get that's a whole oh, other topic yeah, that's for something. a night. But but <laughs> here's the thing, where he, that's a wound, and this is also why groups, and it doesn't have to be this group, guys. Mm -hmm. Like there's other groups out there that you resonate with. Make sure it's not. I would say use discernment. Yes. Make sure they're in love. Make sure they have good boundaries. Make sure those kind of things. Um, I don't know what I was going to say, but, but, <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> um, I'm such a goofball. Ah, uh, Lord. I love you. I've been here since early this morning. That's, I've been in intuition. I've been in seventh plane energy all day She's been long. swimming with it all I day. I probably need some chlorophyll, but, um, you know, when we're, I don't know what I was saying. What was I saying before that? Use your intuition, use your discernment. Yeah. About finding your vibe tribe, finding your soul tribe, finding your people that you can vibe with and learn from oh. and teach and and 
Well, and we're moving. Support each other. Right. And so check and see what things are playing. Like um, right now as healers, this was the point. We're healing a whole lot of collective wounds. Okay. So we've got, and I'm not talking about either side, but there's wounds being healed right now that we can see collectively. A lot of different ones, yeah. right? About, you know, uh, racism, about those kind of wounds, about COVID, about power, struggle. power struggles, about there's lots of stuff and I'm not saying right or wrong, mm -hmm. just saying they exist. The healer wound is another huge one that's being healed right now. That healer wound is a sister wound. So sometimes it makes it, that wound exists. And I've actually had like four people this week, we've done digs on it separately. So I know it's coming out and that is huge because what it can create is an isolation. Oh, big Where you don't trust your sisterhood. Rightfully so, because you need to have discernment and the sisterhood isn't always supporting. There can right. be that competition and that fear. And you know what? There is, we can all shine. There is enough space for there is everyone. More than And we can everybody. honor each other and love each other. And we can be in that space. But that is the wound that we're healing. So just being aware of that. So find your tribe. Uh, you know, find those that do really want to support you from a place of love. And maybe that takes some searching. And the ones that you resonate with. And just remember, too, um, you know, as you... As you as you continue to work on yourself, should you choose to, and as you continue to move forward, your energy and your space is going to shift and change, as it should if you're putting in the time and you're doing the work. Um, again, there is no judgment here. There's no better than, less than, more than, or, or whatever. There's none of that. But as you continue to do the work, your vibration and frequency is going to shift. It, is elevating right so sometimes that shifts our relationships too and um you know it's not always fun or pleasant good point um i have friends that um don't you know that that live in helena where i used to live and i i don't really talk to them anymore i absolutely adore them if they were to call me i'd be there in a heartbeat but they're not really my vibration anymore because they're still where they were when I started this journey and I am not the same person that I was five years no, ago, we're shifting not even so fast. close. And so don't be surprised when people kind of fall out of your vibration. I mean, I was in a relationship um, that ended up being horrible um, because I was shifting rapidly. And as I was doing that, we no longer were in the same vibration or frequency. And so that, that had to come to an end um, as an empath energetically. I just couldn't, eat. it was physically painful to be in the same room with them, so. But that doesn't always have to happen. Exactly, it because doesn't have to. energy and can, train, right. But it can. Yeah. And so part of that, part of that awareness is just being aware that things will shift and change. <laughs> we don't always see it coming though. <laughs> not mm -hmm. like that, right? But it can. Doesn't mean you love them any less, it just means you're not gonna be hanging out with them all the time right. or talking to them all the time. Right. So things can shift, mm -hmm. but they can shift for the positive, you know, and that Absolutely. is positive, but mm -hmm. you know, um, relationships can, sh because the energy is in training, because it is going to try to match. If you just, if you do your thing, like I have found with like my marriage, it has become something I could have only dreamed of. Um, truly. And I never expected necessarily. What happened? Here's a good question. So, so things can shift in the direction you would like in the highest and best. That's the point of that. Okay. Dana asks, have you ever been in a situation where other healers don't grab the fact that you are an intuitive yourself? And if so, how do you handle it? Um, I don't think that's usually. But have you ever? been in a situation where someone didn't see my intuition. Have you ever gone to or been around somebody that you know is a healer of some kind um, and then they don't pick up that you're an intuitive? How I'm, do you deal with that? I'm pretty front and center. Right. So you've never had that experience? No. I haven't. Nice. <laughs> I don't think, have I? Do you recall me saying? I don't think I've ever talked about that. That's never been an issue. I think it's probably happened, but it's one of those things, like, if they don't know it, but it's not something I, it's not always appropriate for your, like, we're always intuitive. It's just there. Like, it's always there. And I always pray, I always pray 
to be connected to God, but I don't always need to see everything, feel everything, or, or know all of it. Like, I don't need to see every spirit that steps in. I don't need to see every, you know. So I choose to have boundaries within that, but I always allow for divine to let me know if there's something I need to do. So it's not always an issue for me to bring forward, but I've never had an issue with somebody who was very intuitive that was talking about it. I've never had a problem sharing. Oh yeah, I do that too. Or sharing not in the space to, to um, compete, but just an honest right. communication. There's a difference there. Yeah. And sometimes it's not appropriate because if they're having their talk, their thing, that's nobody that needs thing. to know I do it, but it doesn't matter. I mean, it's that's that would be my, my ego that would yeah, be Dana's that. asking because it's happened to her and it's very interesting. Okay, I guess I'd have to, mm. I can imagine that's part of that whole wound that's being healed. So yes. here's the thing I do know for sure. And this is with no blame, by the way. Whenever we're seeing it in our life show up for anything, and trust me, I have some interesting things we were talking about beforehand, which we're not going to go into, that show up for me separately, okay, mm -hmm. um, within this wound. If it's happening, the question is always for us, what, not that we're to blame for their behavior, but what do we need, what action do we need to take? What are we learning through that? And once we figure that out, it can shift it for every time moving forward. Absolutely. Sometimes it's simply an action. Sometimes it's knowing that, and I don't know for you particularly, but sometimes it's us knowing that we have value, that we are intuitive, that we don't have to prove ourselves. It can be so many different things. Yeah. And that's part of that healing, knowing that you don't need somebody else's confirmation or validation. I think it's really important in the beginning when people are just awakening and stepping into who they are mm -hmm. because we need that on some level. Oh, I think so too. On some level, just so that we <laughs> no, you're not going crazy. You're not broken. Well, we also need validation that what we're seeing isn't sometimes not everybody does. Right. Validation that this is, are you seeing that too? Right. Like, am I going a little batty that I'm seeing angels? So that's exactly. why I'm saying support system Absolutely. is probably the most important thing. Absolutely. Back to that question you asked me before. Absolutely. I think support. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But that is one facet of that being played out. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, you have anything else that you'd like to share? Do you guys have any other questions for Miss well, Sarah about her journey? Well, and I didn't, I just want to make it clear, I didn't talk about any stuff to, like, be sad. It's just really integral. Those were the critical moments that busted me open um, and are very foundational. In, and, I, and I've been told every step of the way, if they hadn't happened that way, I would not be here the same person I am. That's the learning that comes. Like, do I regret that those things happen? They're actually not painful to me anymore. She's over here crying, but I'm going... I got to see the angels. It was actually cool. I was locked in a suitcase. Not that I ever want it for anybody else or ever to happen again. Clear, cancel, delete. I, I, I really discovered that place is joy. Like, that's the joy I've been reaching for since, and I didn't know it because I didn't. It, but I know it. Like, that's the joy I've been saying, mm, I'm here to bring that here. I'm here to, sh to bring that here well because done. that exists. Well done. Yeah. So not to make people sad, but... Um, Although it is sad. It is a sad story. <laughs> Melissa says it's all part of your journey. Well, it is. And it is, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's sad. I mean, I, I feel it on many levels. One is an empath, but one is a mom as well. Oh, absolutely. And it rips my heart out as a mom. Um, well, my mom didn't do it. My mom was amazing. So... Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But, you know, just... I guess experiencing it like she would as a mom, I still can't even talk about it. So, but anyway, um, you know, but yeah. And I've done this. This is where healing work comes in. And Mo probably was the one that helped me with a lot of this. There was a lot of trauma I released for that. There was a lot of trauma. I was helped to release. There was, a, there was, um, the digs that I went through where a part of me was lost. Literally a part of me was mm -hmm. lost. So, those are all part of the healing journeys that yeah. give me the ability to be um, have empathy in a, in a way that, you know, and be in a space of love and understanding that our trauma stories can be big, 
but but it's through learning from them and healing from them that I can say I'm not wounded by that anymore. I mean, I don't want it to happen to anybody else, and I'd like to right. right. And I love that child, but that child is fully integrated and happy and in joy. Absolutely, like it's something that happened, but it didn't define me in a negative way. Right, and it and doesn't I have to. It made me stronger. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely was a, a part of my trauma story for a long time, along <coughs> with other things. But well, what I what my biggest yeah, and of yeah. course I know. I know the whole story, right? But my biggest takeaway always, and I remember the first time you, you shared your story with me, and I remember just crying. Um, and I really wanted to ugly cry, but I was trying to check it because mm -hmm. it was like it, it was a two box tissue moment. I'm not even going to try yeah. to lie about that. Um, but I, uh, you know, I remember going, wow. What an incredible story of strength and healing and courage. Like, courage to really, really dig into the healing that needed to be done. And that takes a lot of courage to, like, allow yourself to trust when, when trust is an issue for most of us, right? And to really allow yourself to, to, allow yourself to be supported and to trust that those that you've chosen to allow to support you truly are supporting you and to allow yourself to be vulnerable and receive that help that it that takes so much courage and bravery but it's more courage than bravery because there is a distinct difference mm -hmm. but you were brave to have the courage too because bravery is like okay this is probably going to suck but it's the right thing to you know but I'm going to do it anyway mm -hmm. and I encourage is knowing it's the right thing to do and so you do and so I just want to say I, I've always been very honored and blessed and thankful that I've been a small part of that on Aww. your journey and um, to be here to support you any way that I've been able to and um, you're just a beautiful soul on the inside and out and I'm honored I'm, honored. I'm so blessed to have you here yeah. so connection Absolutely. That's the most important thing. Absolutely. Connection. Absolutely. Because without that support, a lot of this journey would have been really, really hard. Well, and I think a lot of us start and we have the best intentions, but it does get hard. It gets hard. And I know I've had my moments. But it gets easier. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, in the beginning, we're like, good grief. I am pushing this boulder of you up Mount, up Mount Everest. Well, I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, just it. to throw out there, I mean, separately, I mean, it's not like, I mean, that's why I took class after class after class because right. I was in that journey. Um, I, I, I get Reiki sessions with other people. I, I do crystal healing with other people. I have discernment and trust, you know, and I know who, um, but I believe deeply in... Um, allowing my sisterhood to support me in that way so um, I'm absolutely thankful for Monique and um, a few other really critical players in my story that helped me especially in the last seven years six years five years I don't know how long time is interesting for me yeah yeah but but that's been part of it too and that's been really important to me um, I deserve that like I knew that I, I do and I think we all do well, like, you know, you said, well, trust and finding your tribe. Um, worthiness is another really big one for healers that we work on. Uh, well, and that's my life lesson. So that was the wound I've been, like, so for me, with hands, you know, taking action to say you're worthy. So me, I knew every time I stepped into worthiness, I was clearing karma. That's how through action. This is where you actually don't need to go see an energy healer because your actions clear your karma. It's just as important as the energy work. So you step in. Okay, am I sharing with the world how unworthy or how worthy I am right now in my action? No. So every time stepping in, stepping in, I am lovable. I am worthy. I am. I am that I am. And I am. <laughs> and I am. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So, oh, yeah. Go ahead. No, that's good. No, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. No. Say it, Gwen. I lost it. It's gone. We're good. 
Let me feel in. Hold on just a second. Yeah. I want to feel if there's something else I'm supposed there's to do. There's something else. <laughs> so just take a minute to tap in. Hmm. So interesting. I'm just asking if there's a specific... I'm not getting what there is. Are you getting what there is? I'm sorry, I'm mumbling. Uh, yeah, I'm not getting. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead. I'd like to... Oh, goodness. Okay. I'm feeling something. So if I have your permission to connect to your energies... Um, and if you don't want me to, just say no, and I won't. Um, creator of all that is, allow me to do that. <sighs> oh. I'd like to ask for a healing of unconditional love for all of you. I'd like to bring in a vibration. Oh, my goodness. So this is where I'm trying to communicate the message that's coming through. Of grace of love, of understanding, of honor, of worthiness. It's like this bundle of love energy, compassion, compassion for you all, because all of you are intuitive healers. Every single person that's in here is awakening to that. You're all, it, it, even if, if you're not claiming that, you are all have the ability within you to heal. So we are all healers whether we're meant to work with others or not. But if, if, if at all the sisterhood wound re you know, resonated with you, if at all you feel like you would like to, I'm hearing clear some of the karmic wounding around that that we've talked about that came up during this. I'm literally hearing a blanket of a release of the karmic wound of that sisterhood wound, of feeling unsupported, in competition, unworthy, persecuted, abused, traumatized, traumatized, disconnected because of it, and releasing all karmic wounds that are ready to be released that you're ready to, and doing that first, if you accept that, say yes, creator of all that is, is requested to do that now, thank you, it's done, it's done, it's done, show me. Ooh, pulling that trauma from the field, pulling those karmic wounds, and hearing balancing the karma for that, and teaching you instead that you are worthy, that you know how to support, that you can support and that you do. And this is not just for women, by the way. This is a wound that is healers we all connect to. So it could also be classified as the... Um, Hmm, the connection wound, interesting. Mm -hmm. So the brotherhood wound, it, it classifies for all of that. Anywhere that you're coming from, if you've experienced that. Bringing in a healing for that, with permission, bringing that in. Bringing in the vibration of love, peace, harmony. That bundle of pure unconditional love in honoring of you as an individual and letting you know that you're worthy and deserving of the support of a tribe, of a sisterhood or a brotherhood that you resonate with and that you know how to when to as possible to and you do. If you'd like to receive that, create that now. Oh, teach you that you know how and when to share your authentic self with others, that you have the discernment and the appropriate trust with appropriate vulnerability, that you know how to share that all through Creator, the highest vibrational alignment. Create that now. So these are all vibrations that move in. So you just may feel, if you say yes, you may feel tingles. They're like coming in, they actually help your neuroreceptors to um, perceive things a different way, to respond a different way, to send signals to the cells for yourselves to receive. There's a whole feedback system there. Teaching you that you are valuable, that your skills and gifts are valuable, and that yours are individual for you, and they're right. That you can know that your divine gifts and your intuition whew, 
is beautiful and that you are loved infinitely with them and that you understand that, that you can use them with love, through love, always in love, that it's possible and that you do if you choose to. Create that now. And that you're infinitely loved. That message is coming through. Infinitely loved. The more you stand in the space of love, pure love, the more those gifts will open. If you choose to have them. Okay. There's just an outpouring of love. Like I can just see all this love surrounding you. Mm, anywhere your heart. So I'm seeing the heart. Anywhere your hurt, heart has been so hurt by your peers, the sisters, the brothers. However that is reflected for you. Oh, just bringing in a healing for that. For everyone who would like it. Create that now. anything to add to that? No. Okay. Oh. Just love yourself as much as you love others. Yes. Just as much as you pour out to other people, pour pour into yourself with the same same amount of love and energy. Mm. Fill your cup. You're worthy. And you're deserving. And you need it just as much as everybody else does. Yeah, and I'm hearing for you to see yourself in a see a waterfall this beautiful gentle waterfall the most beautiful waterfall with all the prisms of the rainbow and pure pure white light moving through it and watch as it pours over your auric field and your body and know that as this is pouring over you worthiness filling you up you are worthy oh and just feel it pour over and fill up at your feet and fill up your whole being. Oh, okay. And go ahead. So we're going to take that and just rinse all of our energies off. I'm going to separate all of our energies so we're in our own space. And I want you to go ahead and take your energy and just ground it all the way into the ground going all the way beyond the layers into the center of the earth, plugging into the center, grounding in, deeply connected. And allowing that energy to come back up while staying grounded, coming into your heart space, and expanding with love to encompass your whole body. And know that you are completely cleansed and rinsed and loved and worthy when you're ready, open your eyes if they were closed. Thank you, Creator, for being here. Mm -hmm. Aho. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Sarah, for sharing your, your story, your journey mm -hmm. this, thus far. Um, I will share mine next. <laughs> and I get to put her in the hot seat. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> <laughs> as as my friend April would say, I did put a pin in it for a little bit. <laughs> Bought myself a little bit of time. <laughs> yeah, just you wait. Uh, now that I know we're going to be asking questions, <laughs> I'm going to come up with some good ones. Actually, I'll just ask the angels. <laughs> <laughs> they they were just giving them to me. So, yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a great evening. Have an amazing weekend. Create an amazing day for yourself every single day. And we will talk to you next time. Love you guys. Love Bye -bye. you guys.